excited because today I'm going to do my first like wrap ups video and I'm going to combine it with my September TBR because I just felt like, I don't know, I just felt like that made sense. But I just wanted to share this with you. This is the a green tea with pineapple juice from Trader Joe's. It is superior. It is superior. So if you haven't had this, go try it right now. I feel like I'm in a weird mood today. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I'm in a weird mood today. So if the vibes are weird, I'm sorry, but that's just how I feel today. So in this video, this is going to be my first video that kind of contains spoilers because I want to talk in depth about some things. So going over the books that I read in August, there are going to be spoilers. And then obviously for the September TBR, I haven't read the books yet. So there's not going to be, well, I've read one of the books, but I'm not going to do any spoilers for the TBR, but I'm going to do some spoilers for the August wrap up because I just want to get down and dirty with the details. Okay. I just do. So the first two books that I read in the month of August were The Daughter of the Pirate King and The Daughter of the Siren Queen. I read both of them on my Kindle. I like thoroughly enjoyed both of those stories. It was amazing pirate vibes. It was so fast paced, so like kept me excited. The characters I loved. The settings were amazing, like it was just all around an awesome series or duology, I guess. Yeah, I really enjoyed these books. So I kind of want to talk about a little bit in depth, I guess, some of like my thoughts, opinions. Holy moly, she is like a spitfire gal and I loved her powerful character. I loved her personality. I loved her spunk. I loved her like just get it done kind of attitude. Absolutely loved her. And so it's about her and this, like the main two characters I guess would be her and the like love interest Raiden. And so this book is an en enemies to lovers and she goes and gets purposely kidnapped essentially or like purposely taken over by this other pirate ship because her dad wants her to find this map piece that is on their ship and so the guy Raiden has been sent to question her and like they want dirt and information on the pirate king because he's like so powerful they want to know how like what his weak spots are and where they can take him down and so like <laughs> Obviously it's flirtatious and it's like, there's some spunk and spice between them, but like she's a girl on a mission. Like she has a job to get done. I just love how the story unfolds, how she eventually finds the map piece. Like essentially what brings them together together is they get overtaken by a different bad pirate that they both don't like and they have to work together essentially to get away from this other bad pirate. and. So that kind of brings them together and like makes her realize like how much she actually cares about him, which is really, really sweet. And so then they work together to essentially get things back on track. So that's kind of the first story. And then the second book continues that story because now her dad has found all the map pieces and it's supposed to lead to the island of the sirens where the sirens keep all of their treasure. And in the first book, we learn that Alosa is the daughter of a siren, that her dad somehow seduced a siren and had a child, and that is Alosa. And so she has some siren powers, and we get to see a lot more of that in the second book, which I absolutely love. Her dad has always told her that her mom ran away, wanted nothing to do with her, abandoned them, blah, blah, blah. And then in the second book, she finds out that her dad has kept her mom captive this entire time because he wants her to produce more children, which is just like so messed up on so many levels. And so she breaks her mom out of captivity. Then she's like on the run from her dad essentially because then her dad's pissed. And then her mom, who's a siren, 
wants so badly to return to the water. So the second she's saved, like she loves her daughter, but she is the siren queen, it turns out. So she needs to go back to all of her other sirens to start ruling them again. And like all, all of her family, everything she's ever known is there. So she just goes straight into the water and leaves. And Elosa is like, what the heck? So I like just ruined the relationship with my dad because I broke my mom out of captivity and now my mom is gone. So great. So <laughs> she luckily took down copies of all the map pieces. And so her and her crew start heading towards the Siren Island. Raiden is obviously on the crew and it's just so sweet to see their relationship start growing and blossoming into something more. And there's just all kinds of wonderful pirate scenes and it's just, there is a heart wrenching scene though with some cannibals um, in the second book that was actually a little hard to read. It was just so incredibly sad. And so I think I definitely cried a little bit during that part cause I was just like in shock and like so upset for one of the characters. Yeah, so eventually they like make it to the Siren Island and she reunites with her mom and they kind of battle it out at the end and then things come to a conclusion. I was so thoroughly surprised by these books. The plot and the storyline was so great. It kept moving, it kept flowing. Everything was pretty fast paced for the most part. And the writing, so creative, it kept me on the edge of my seat in the best way. Not like in a like thriller type of way, but just like you're so excited to see what comes next. So I thoroughly enjoyed that duology. Um, I would highly recommend to anybody who loves fantasy, anybody who loves books that are fast paced, exciting. Um, and the books are on Kindle Unlimited, both of them. So if you have access to that and you can get the books for free, like seriously do, they were amazing. So then the third book that I read for the month of August was The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. And that was our book club book for the month. And we wanted to try like a genre that we don't really read all the time, but it's considered a mystery. And I liked the mystery aspect of it and I liked the overall storyline of it, but I just didn't think it was executed super well. Um, there was a lot of world building and fluff and stuff in the beginning, like just describing the setting of where the mystery takes place in this marsh somewhere in Europe. And it's like this dilapidated house and it's like, yeah, we get it. It's a marsh. Like we don't need a hundred pages of explanation of what a marsh is, which like the story got going, it got there, but I just thought it was a little excessive and unnecessary. And then the like bulk of the story was good because there's a lot of that mystery aspect and you're like, they're dancing around what actually happened. And that was really exciting to me. And then the end was so abrupt. The last probably 50 pages, like everything happened and they didn't give a ton of detail as to exactly how things concluded. And so I was a little bit disappointed with the ending and I wish that they would have taken the time and care that they put into the beginning and like all the description and everything into the end so that we had more of a conclusion. Because essentially the story is that there are these friends that meet because they're at this boarding school and each one of them has their own reasoning for being there. Like one girl is pretty troubled and she's gotten expelled from a bunch of schools. One girl, her parents moved out of the country and they weren't ready for her to come with them yet. So she moved into the boarding school. One of the girls, their dad is the professor there, the art professor. And then one of the other girls, her mom is terminally ill and her dad is busy taking care of her mom and doesn't have time to take care of the children. So she gets put into the boarding school. So they all become friends. They create this thing called the Lion Game, which I kind of understood how that part was relevant to the story, but at the same time, like not because the whole thing is called the Lion Game. I don't know, it just didn't really make sense for the overall plot to even have the game a thing, aside from the fact that like they're trapped in a lie for their whole lives. But then the entire premise of the story is that the girl whose dad works at the school commits and they cover up his death 
because I guess in Europe you can't live alone as a minor unless you're 16 years old. So she didn't want to be taken away from her house and all that she knows. So they waited until she turned 16 to report anything about it. And so they like covered up his death and like went and buried him. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, I guess, like, I understand they were in, like, a desperate spot and didn't know what to do and they're all, like, 15 years old and they obviously did not make the best decision, but, like, yeah. And so then they all go their separate ways at that point. Essentially, the reader is led to believe that he committed suicide because he drew nude pictures of all of these girls and the school found them and got really angry. And so they thought that he was embarrassed or like thought he was gonna be fired and didn't know what to do with his life. Later we find out that the daughter of the professor was involved with her stepbrother and the dad found out and was gonna separate them. The stepbrother didn't wanna be separated. And so he killed the stepdad because he didn't wanna be separated from her and I don't know it just seemed like a, a lot of book for not a lot of story and I just wish that they would have given more of a conclusion because essentially what happens is they find out like all the rest of the girls find out what happened and they've been holding on to this secret for for like 15 years or something they find out that it was the stepbrother and then like the very end is like you find that out and then the house catches on fire and then the stepbrother and the daughter of the artist professor die in the fire and like that's it and then the girls who are left you go to the police station and like say nothing and like that's it so i was kind of just like it didn't really have much of a conclusion it didn't give any information of like what they said at the police station or like how did the friends like agree on a story if anybody ever asked you know like there was just a lack of ending and i didn't love that so that was that book i think i gave that book like a three out of five or a three and a half out of five. I think now that I've sat on it for a while, I would say it's more of a three out of five. The last two books that I read in August were Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves. And if you heard me talk about this at all in my last video, you would know that I fell in love with this series. I fell in love with these characters. I fell in love with the whole world and the story and just wow. Like, I was so thoroughly impressed. I was intimidated when I first started reading it because the first book is over 500 pages and then the second book is just under 500 pages. And I have not read a 500 page book in a hot minute. And so I was really intimidated, but Kazi and Jace are just like the most amazing characters and they are so meant for each other in all the right ways. I felt like they were real people, man. Like they were such complex characters and had so much going on and so many layers and like Kazi was just the sweetest, kindest, most wonderful person. And then Jace was like just a guy who has his priorities straight and has his head screwed on right and just, I was thoroughly impressed by the characters. Like it wasn't like, oh, the girl is great and then the guy is like just a hunk of meat and like he's got chiseled abs or whatever. He was a wonderful character. It was like an enemies to lovers, to enemies to lovers, to enemies to lovers, like kind of thing. Because in the first book, the premise is that Kazi is sent there by the queen to find this fugitive that started a war way back when, who ran away and has been in hiding. And someone reported that they had seen him there. And so, the queen sent her premier guard or part of her premier guard to go get this fugitive. So it's Kazi and Ren and Sinov, and those are like her two like closest friends, practically family. And so they're sent out to, I don't know if it's Hell's Mouth or Tor's Watch or like what exactly the town is called, but to the area that Jace rules essentially. Kind of their worlds collide because they got captured in his city by labor. I can't remember what it's called, but they got captured by people that want to sell them for labor, essentially. And they were chained together. So it's like forced proximity trope, which I thought it was done so well because it wasn't like super cheesy, but they essentially had to work together to survive. And so then they start getting to know each other. And then when they finally escape, they get back to 
Scores Watch or Hell's Mouth or whatever the community is that he rules. And Jace doesn't know really why she's there. She kind of played it off that like, oh, there's been treaty violations and the queen wants to oversee them and everything. So they're getting to know each other. Jace is giving her the history of the Ballinger family and the area and like all the trading that goes on there and like showing, like just really opening up his home to her and she feels bad because she's starting to care about him. And so they're kind of using each other for different like ulterior motives. So then it's revealed like the true cause of like why she's there because she figures out that Jace is working with the fugitive to build weapons and she is just so angry and so frustrated and just feels super betrayed because she started to really care about him and then he obviously feels betrayed because then it's revealed like what her true intentions were with coming to his area so then it's just like everything falls apart and you're like no like they were supposed to be together and it was supposed to work and it was supposed to be amazing and so just things went to crap which is kind of sad essentially she arrests jace and the fugitives and his helpers and brings them back to her kingdom where the queen is that she works for it's called venda and so she brings them back to venda to stand trial and jace also has to stand trial because he's like harboring fugitives but she cares about him and then as they're traveling to venda she finds out that like yes he was harboring fugitives but he didn't really know exactly who they were or what their intentions were and so obviously Kazi, like when she found that out she was like oh crap like now he's gonna have to go face trial and the queen might like kill him and blah 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 so she talked to the queen and she's really close to the queen it's really cute because Kazi does not have her mother anymore so the queen has kind of filled a lot of that role for her which is very sweet so then jace is on trial and Kazi's there and the queen is like laying into him and like all this and then she's like okay well because of what Kazi said, like, we're gonna actually recognize you as the kingdom and we're going to essentially give you everything that you've wanted from us. And then she's like, but I don't know if I can trust you. Like, you, you were working with fugitives. Like, I just don't know. And so then everybody's panicking and you're like, wait, 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 what? Like, we thought we were gonna get everything that we wanted. Like, why is she taking it back? And like, why, like, what is going on? And then she goes, um, I think you might need some watching. Like, I want to keep an eye on you. Like, I don't know if I fully trust you yet. We're going to start the process of recognizing you as a kingdom. But while that's in the process, I'm going to need someone from my team to watch over you and make sure, like, you're doing good things. So, Kazi is going to be assigned to you. Which, like, so the queen knows. Like, the queen knows what went down. Like, she knows that Kazi loves him and that he loves her. And it's, like, super sweet. And so then they like celebrate and all of that and then they start heading back to the ballinger territory and that's the end of the first book and then the second book they're going through the wilderness like getting going back to the ballinger territory and it's just so sweet because they're just so in love and they're so like connected and it's just such a good time for them to reconnect and just like fall deeply in love with each other but she's obviously worried because when they get back, she's gonna have to face his family and his family did not really love her the last time they saw her because she was arresting their son and like taking him away to be tried by the queen of Venda. So obviously they're not her biggest fans. So she's super nervous to go see his family again. And as they're coming in to Tor's watch, like his castle or whatever, where the family stays, they get ambushed and jace takes like six arrows like one in his arm one in his leg one through his chest like he's just riddled with arrows and so kazi like freaks out she jumps off her horse and just starts slashing people and she kills like four of whoever is attacking them go her she is so freaking awesome and like sends jace's horse like running to try to get him out of the action she she winds up getting stabbed and kidnapped and taken by whoever just ambushed them. And she doesn't know where Jace is. She doesn't know if he lives. She doesn't know what happens. And they're like completely separated. And essentially what happened is the kingdom got overtaken by this general and the king of, I think it's called Icelandia. 
and he like thinks he rules where the Ballingers rule. So he thinks it's rightfully his place and it's his land and blah, blah, blah. So he like overthrows it when Jace is gone and they're more weak, he overthrew it and took over, I guess. So they're like questioning Kazi and torturing her and abusing her and like, she is being kept in a cell and she has this stab wound and it's not healing. And then all of a sudden she starts receiving medicine from whoever is watching her cell or whatever. So she starts healing and like feeling better but she still doesn't know like who's giving her medicine. She finds out like who took over and why. And like, it turns out that the general is the brother of the um, fugitive that she took to Venda to be tried for his crimes. And so like, it's all just like interconnected. And so she's like, about to go like kill this guy because she's like, well, now I have the strength, I'm healed. Like I can take you down. And then he reveals to her that he has Jace's youngest brother and sister. They're like four and five or five and six years old. Like they're babies. So she's like, oh my gosh. So I can't kill this guy because he's gonna hurt the kids. And so like, now I don't know what to do. So she's trying to figure out a plan to get away. She still doesn't know if Jace is even alive. And then Jace's cousin, Paxton comes in and plops like a hand on the table with Jace's signet ring on it. And so she's like freaking out, like doesn't, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, there's no way, like Jace is, like if Jace is dead, like I'm closing this book and I'm putting it away. Like that is, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> like it was too much for me. And so then it's revealed because Paxton, Jace's cousin, was like ostracized from the family and he hated the family and that's why I think that the king took him as like an asset because he knows a lot about like the Ballinger like family and about the place and everything so he used him as an asset instead of killing him because Paxton was known to be against the Ballingers. And it turns out that Paxton like is the one that gave Kazi medicine and he actually went out and found Jace in the wilderness with all these arrows in him and took him to a Venden settlement in the Ballinger territory to be like taken care of and nursed back to health. So like Paxton, we love him so much. Like I hated him in the first book and then in the second book, oh my gosh, the redemption story for him was so good and like such a wonderful, part of the story and like such a resolve. And so then Kazi and Paxton work together to figure out a plan to get the kids to safety because they know that the second they're not useful to the king anymore, like he's going to like be rid of them. And so obviously they don't want that to happen. So they come up with a plan. They wind up getting the kids away from him, but they get found out. So they both have to run away from the king. And Kazi runs to where she knows the family is hiding. They're hiding in this vault and there's a main entrance where the king's guards are stationed at trying to blast them out of the vault. But there's a second secret entrance that Kazi knows about because her and Jace are in love and he told her everything. She goes to the secret entrance, sees the family, tries to explain everything that's going on. They're obviously not buying any of it because Jace isn't with her to back her up. And she's like yelling at them being like, like he's alive, like you need to help him. We need to go find him. Like they're after me. They don't believe her, they're being really horrible. And so they push her into a snare trap and like make a bunch of noise so that soldiers will come and find her. And I just was like heartbroken, so upset. So she gets taken and they are questioning her. They wanna know where the secret entrance is and she won't give it up. And I'm just like, she is the most amazing person. Like she loves them and cares about them so much because they're Jace's family, even though they pushed her into a snare trap, got her captured again. Like she just loves and cares about this family. The king has her bitten by poisonous dogs and says, you won't get the antidote until you give us the information that we want. So she's just like in so much pain. She's having a horrible time. And to add insult to injury, this guy that we see throughout the books, this guy who worked as part of the black market and they go and get all kinds of things for people that can pay. And someone wanted him to go get a woman who could produce children and 
So he went to go kidnap a woman who had kids and he kidnapped Kazi's mom. Like he broke in in the middle of the night and took Kazi's mom when Kazi was six years old. Like just gut wrenching. And so this guy just happens to turn up at like working for the king and he's in there torturing her, trying to get her to tell like all the information and obviously like she is terrified and horrified because this is the guy that separated her and her mom and it's just horrible and they go to like be rid of her in the public square and that's when it's revealed that Jace is healed and he actually met up with Ren and Sunov because somehow they knew something was wrong and they got together, got the family together. They told the family everything that happened and they felt so bad that they had her be captured again. And so they devise a plan that when she's out in the public square, they're gonna swoop down and save her. And so they do and they are finally reunited and it's like, thank goodness. And uh, I don't know, I could just literally keep going and going and going. Like, I don't think we need to go through the entire plot, but eventually they have to like, essentially battle it out with the king and Jace kills the king. Everything is hunky-dory and wonderful at the end. And I just was like, throughout the entire book about thieves, my jaw was like, I couldn't even believe what was happening. Like I couldn't even, it was so fast paced and so like, holy cannoli, like everything was happening all at once. So if you have the ability to read that duology, I seriously would read it over and over and over again. I, it was five out of five series for me. It was amazing. The story's amazing. The character's amazing. The writing is amazing. I flew through those 500 pages, but seriously, so amazing. Highly recommend. So that, is all the books that I read in August and I am so excited for September and the books that I'm going to read in September. August was a 10 out of 10 reading month. I read some amazing books. The Lion Game was not as amazing, but the other four, The Daughter of the Pirate King duology and The Dance of Thieves duology made up for it tenfold. I'm so excited and I'm really looking forward to September. Woo, woo, okay. Oh my gosh. We have a stack. We have a hefty, whoa, we have a hefty stack, okay? So last month I read five books. This month I'm hoping to read at least one more than that, hopefully two or three more than that, depending on my schedule and how much reading I can fit in. And so far we are off to a good start because the first book that I was going to put on my TBR for this month because it's our book club book is Confess by Colleen Hoover. She's done. She's read. She's finished. I read her on the 1st of September cover to cover and I was so proud of myself. <laughs> I don't know if I have ever done that with a book or if I have. It's a very rare occurrence. Um, but this book was really good. This book was... I think I rated it a four and a half or a four out of five. We're already off to a good start because I already ticked off one of my September TBR books. Next on the list for September, I really want to finish the second Harry Potter book. I am, let's see, 65 pages in. We are at chapter five, The Whomping Willow. Um, so my goal is to finish this in September because I have so much of the movie in my head when I'm reading these and so it's really cool to like imagine the characters and get more detail than the movie from the books and I've just really been enjoying it so far so I'm excited for this one. I would really like to read The Pilgrim's Regress this month which I did not really realize this when I picked it up but it's like 10 mini books inside this book. So I think this is something that I'm probably going to pick up either in between books or like if I'm feeling like a lull, like say I make it to like page 100 and then I'm kind of like, oh, like I'm feeling a little bit sluggish with this. Then I'm like, okay, I'll pick up this, read one of the mini books and then get back to this kind of thing. 
So I think this will be a really good in-between slash like palette cleanser throughout the month. Next I have, I am so excited for this book. This is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. This is just like seriously the most beautiful book cover I think I've ever seen, at least in a long time. And I've been so like chomping at the bit to read this book, but I've been holding off because I almost want to use it as like a motivator because I'm so excited to read this book that I'm like, okay, we'll read one of these or one of my other books first. And then when I'm starting to really slump, we'll crack this bad boy out and we'll get to it. So yeah, I'm super excited about this one. I also have In Five Years. I really want to read this book. Um, I borrowed it from my best friend and she needs it back. Like I've had this for months now and I have not read it. And after reading Confess, because I've been on such a fantasy kick, I was like, okay, now I feel like I'm kind of in the mood for like a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of romance. And this is another romance since the other three books on my TBR are fantasy. So I feel like this will be a good palette cleanser. And this book is only... This book is really short. It's only 251 pages. This will be a fast read. So excited about this one. And then I have on my September TBR, I have The Alchemist. I've had this book for a while now, maybe almost a year, I feel like. And I have been wanting to read it. I love stories like this of like finding yourself, finding your destiny, becoming the person who you're meant to be kind of stories. And so... I have been wanting to read this and I just need to do the dang thing and read it because I know I'm gonna love it. So that won't take me very long either. So I'm trying to sprinkle in some different size books so that I don't feel super intimidated. And then I don't have it with me, but I would like to start reading the Shadow and Bone series, at least to get through the first book this month. Um, I watched the TV show actually and absolutely loved it. Also, the Shadow and Bone series has been all over everywhere. And because I love the show so much, I'm really intrigued to see how I feel about the books. Am I gonna connect with the characters like I did in the show? Am I gonna, I don't know, so we'll see. Typically I'm not a show before book type of person, except for Harry Potter, I guess. I'm just excited to start the Shadow and Bone series. I am excited to get involved with a giant universe. I've kind of been in the mood. I've been reading a lot of duologies a lot of one-offs and so I'm kind of excited to jump into a bigger series and get kind of enthralled and really in depth in a new world and universe. So yeah, I think that is all that is going to be on my September TBR. I'm trying to keep it somewhat realistic so that there is a chance that I can finish all of them. And so far we're off to a good start. So I would say the chances are pretty high, but I will keep it updated on my Goodreads if you want to follow me over there. Um, I will also be keeping updates on my Instagram if you want to follow me over there too. I think that's it for today. I'm so excited to dive into more of these books. If you guys have a September TBR, please share with me. I'd be so curious to know what books you guys are reading this month. And I would love any sort of recommendations for the month of October. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Happy reading! Bye!